Hello guys, welcome again to my channel. My name is Lone Vic and today we will be learning to play Praga or Prague for the English speaking crowd, Caput Regni. This is a game by Vladimir Suhe. You might know this guy especially from a game called Underwater Cities, which is one of my personal favorite Euro games. Delicious Games is the publisher of this title. I've got the Polish language version of the game from Portal, but this is a language independent game, so there will be no text to show you here whatsoever, so my explanation is very universal. Now, because this game can play from one to four players, and the single player mode is identical to playing a multiplayer game with a little one rule change which doesn't influence a lot, I will be combining this how to play video with a playthrough as well, at least for the first half of the game, so that you will be able to see how to play each turn, you know, step by step, and also I will be explaining all the rules along the way. So let's find out how to set this game up first, and then how to play a single and multiplayer game at the same time. Let's go! Okay, so now the box is out of the way, and the first thing that you need to do is you have to place the game board on your table. Uh, it doesn't fit into my camera, as you can see, so I had to do it a horizontal layout, and you have to construct this action wheel that will be spinning around here. And sorry, I don't remember the English professional names for those things, because I've got the Polish version of the game, but the main areas of this player board are as follows. There is this action wheel from which you'll be taking your actions, there is the cathedral space, there is the university space, and the game also gives you those three dimensional versions of the cathedral and the university as you can see, but I won't be using them in this playthrough for visibility reasons, because it's easier to see uh, those when they are flat on the board. We've got the river, which will have this 3D bridge on it as well, with those two tiles. We have the upper market, the lower market, and the road that goes through the markets as well. There is also the tile display here, and of course the victory point tracker around the board. Each player gets their own player board with their resource wheels. There is gold and there is a rock symbol here, and we've got tracks for uh, quarries or rock mines and gold mines, and we've got vertical tracks for knowledge level and the university level, and each player should also get uh, this hexagonal board with their own player color, in my case it's red, and they should place it somewhere nearby. So those are the big elements that we take onto the table, and we can also place the bridge here. The bridge has those two tiles which are double-sided, and it doesn't matter which side you place them on the bridge, you can mix and match, it doesn't really matter, those are just a few bonuses. All right, once you've got this covered, you should take these grey tiles, or they're called bridge tiles, with a Roman number 4 on them, shuffle them, there should be six of them, and place them here in this designated area next to the bridge. Then you take those gold tiles, which have endgame scoring conditions, and they have a numeral 5 on the back, you shuffle them and you place three of those next to the bridge, and three of them next to the cathedral over here, next to those seals. Okay. There is also this very tiny blue five victory point marker, which should go here. The crown symbol in this game symbolizes victory points. Then, after you are done with the bridge and the bridge tiles, you should take those double hexagonal tiles, which are the action tiles, and these are double-sided as well. The gold side is symmetrical for easier games, and the grey side is asymmetrical for more complicated and challenging games. I will be doing the grey side for this uh, playthrough. And you should take the wheel uh, with the actions, and you've got an arrow here, which should be pointing at the beginning of the game to the designated number of players. If we are playing a two-player game, and a solo game is played also as a two-player game, so the arrow should point here, four-player games here, and three-player games over here. Once you set the wheel, you distribute those action tiles like so. Never mind whether they are gold side or grey side up, but all of them have to be of the same color. And the rulebook also suggests how to 
distribute those tiles for the first game so it's the most fair, but later on you can do it completely randomly. It's only important that they land in these six areas that I've placed them right now. Now, next you have two cubes, which are like this wooden color. One of them goes here on the track, depending on the number of players, four players, three players, or two player, or one player game as well. And the other one goes into this notch in the action wheel. You will see why we need this later on. Okay, so we've got a lot set up covered right now, but there is a lot more to do. Take one round player marker and place it on the victory track, place this player piece or player pawn next to the road, not on the first area, but next to the road on the right side, somewhere there is a like kind of a starting region. Now you've got player cubes in the color of the player, and you distribute them as follows. Two of them are spare, and they can go here on the board, that's at least where I put them. Two cubes go at the bottom of the education and university tracks. Two go into the marked spaces for the quarries. We've got three in the beginning, and the gold mines, we should have number four covered in the beginning. And three of them go into these slots in the player board, and the remaining two should be placed on those spaces marked with number one on the university and on the cathedral spaces. Okay, now we've got also something that's called production tokens, and these have their spaces on the river. Those are those six tiny production tokens, and uh, you should place them as so. And there are two production tokens that have uh, the same version, so you can place them one on top of each other. There are eight in total and six spaces, so this is how these should be covered. We've got resources, windows, white and gold. We've got bonus tokens, blue and red, and we've got eggs. This is another type of resource. These should be placed next to the board. Next to the board, you should also place those upgrades that you'll be using during the game, and I'll place them somewhere here, and these are divided into four levels. So you should have four stacks of upgrades, level one, level two, level three, and level four. We're getting closer to the finish line here. Now we've got those three display tracks for these hexagonal pieces of buildings, wall pieces, and upgrades. And in the beginning of the game, before you set up the game, you should divide all those hexes that you have with the game in those three colors, gold, gray, and gray and red, into four stacks. Two stacks with the number one on them, and one of them has S also as special, and then two stacks with number two on them, and also the smaller one will have an S here. And you place one hex from the S special stack in this first area, and three hexes from the normal stack in the three remaining areas. And the rest of those pieces go next to the board. We will be using them later on. And the same goes for the two other colors. So two, three normal number one hexes and one number one hex with an S marked special in the first area and one red special hex here and three normal red hexes with buildings into those three spaces. And mind you, all of them should be from the number one stacks. The number two stacks will come into the game later on. Two more elements to place on the boards. Now, we've got these market tokens, as you can see, these, this is how they look, and they have differently colored stalls here. We've got some red, we've got some yellow, and we've got some uh, gray ones as well, and these should cover corresponding stall colors on those areas in both of the markets. Now, mind you that there is one space that's reserved only for a four-player game, and it has four meeples printed here, and there is one space reserved only for four- and three-player games, and it's also marked accordingly. So in a two-player game, which I am setting up right now, these two spaces are not covered at all. And those tiles are double-sided, and you can use whichever side you want randomly. So I'll put a red stall here. There is a red stall here as well. Um, I've got a red one here, and there is another red one here. There you go. There is a yellow one here. 
and I've got a gray one over here, a gray one is also over here, and I've got one blue one that's twisted around like so, and I think these are all that I should distribute because these two areas for a two-player game are not occupied. So I've got three remaining ones in my hand and they should go back into the box. And now also if you are playing a two or three player game, you should take a look at these two areas that also have those meeples. Now in a three player game, this area should have a building already built, a red building from the stack with number one. And if it's a two-player game, both of these areas should have a building already placed. So this is what I will do for a two-player game. I will place one building here and I will also place one building here. The orientation of the building does not matter. Okay, so this is the market setup as well. And one more thing before we start playing the game is that I should mention that there are a few variations or alternatives that come with the box. Now, we've placed our cubes on this track here, and remember, each player in a two, three, four player game should have their cube here. But in the box, you also have alternative tracks delivered for the cathedral and the university, and they are also double-sided. There is an A side and a B side, and you can always cover those tracks that come originally in the game, both on the university and on the cathedral area, with those alternatives, keeping in mind that those three that cover the cathedral have to be the same side up, so for example three times A, and the same goes for the university, but you can use the B sides on the university and A sides on the cathedral and this doesn't really matter. But the same building should have all of them on the same side. And then you have also some alternative tokens, also double-sided, for these areas on the, uh, on the tract, on the road, and they have Roman numerals 1, 2, 3 for the first, second and third space and you also always cover the first action, not the second one and you can also flip them around any side. So yes, there are some varieties added to the game so that each game doesn't look identically the same. Okay, but for now we are set up and we are ready to play a game. So one more time, Remember that if it's a two or three player game, you have to watch out for these areas on the market which you don't cover with market stalls or which you have to cover with red buildings. Please remember to set the wheel correctly onto the player value and place this cube on the appropriate player value. Each player should have one cube here. Prepare the player board and the player space as so for each player and you should be ready to play the game. So, without stalling anymore, let's dive in into Praga Caput Regni by Vladimir Suhi. All right, so guys, now as I said in the beginning of this video, I will be doing a solo playthrough. I'll be explaining all my actions and also all the rules in detail so that you can learn to play the game. The only difference between a multiplayer game and a solo game is that when I finish my turn, the solo player or the, the, my enemy will take the first tile from the wheel and will place it on the uh, last available space and then turn the action wheel again. And so the solo player doesn't do anything and my task is to just get as many points as possible. If it was a two-player game we would be doing the same turns uh, as uh, I will be doing right now, player by player, and we would be just swapping back and fro until the end of the game is triggered. The victory goes to the player who collected the most points at the end of the game and at the end of this video I will also explain to you how to score uh, the points after the game is done. Okay, so during your turn you have to choose one of these tiles from the wheel and these tiles represent the actions that you also have uh, marked here. So we've got six different actions. There is a gold mine action to build a gold mine or to mine for gold. There is a quarry action which is similar so you either mine for rocks or you build a new quarry. There is a build wall action, upgrade action, build a market building action or there is this action 
to continue down the road and finally build the bridge. And all of those actions can bring you points at the end of the game. When you are taking the action from the wheel, you have to mind that the red areas cost you money. So uh, you have to pay for taking the tile from a red area. The green areas are safe and they don't cost you anything, while the blue ones give you a bonus of victory points if you take a, a tile from this area. But in a solo game that won't happen because of the uh, solo player's enemy taking off the first tile every single time. This is this little token with a five is here for a case where uh, an action token would be here and it got spinned around and it would leave this five victory point field so that you can remember that it's also worth five victory points because nobody wanted to take it or something like that. So uh, this is just to remember. And one more thing that I forgot is that each player starts with two gold and two rocks. So you should be setting those two dials uh, to these values on your player board. Okay, so as my first action, I will definitely take the quarry action. So I will take this hex here, which has the, which has the quarry action or the upgrade action. And once you take this hex, you have a choice between those two actions. You can only perform one of them. And I will be performing the quarry action. So my choices are two. I can either collect one stone or one rock and build one mine by sliding this red marker along the row to the right, or I could mine for rocks in all my available quarries, which would give me one, two rocks, basically, two stones as resources, because I have the two left fields uncovered here. Now, I will choose the first option, so I will collect one rock and I will create one new mine, which uncovered a victory point symbol here under uh, this number three area. And how it works is that if I decided the next turn to mine for rocks, I would get three rocks as resources and I would also mine this victory point. But for now I've built one, so I've moved uh, the quarry marker once to the right, I've built one and I've collected one rock. And this is my action. And when you collect an action from the action wheel, you are also entitled to entitled to do this bonus action or this bonus effect that you have on the wheel. So in my case, I'm collecting one additional rock for taking the action tile from this area. So I ultimately collected two rocks in this round. And now my round is over. I place the uh, action token on the last available space and I spin the wheel once. And if this were a two-player game or a three or a four-player game, the other player would now do the same. They would collect one action token uh, and conduct one of the actions from it, and then they would put it back, spin the wheel, and so forth and so on. But if it's a single-player game, then I should right now take the first action token, which is closest to the blue areas, put it on the last available space, spin once, and it's my turn again. Okay, so now you know how to uh, build quarries or how to collect rocks as a resource and for the gold it's for the gold action It's identically the same So if I took this token for example right now and I wanted to do the gold mining action I would have a choice by for mining three gold because I have three mines available at the beginning of the game or mining only one gold and building a new gold mine, but I don't want to do that I would like to, right now, build one of the wall areas, or those wall hexes. And this is how you do that. I will be collecting this action token, which has, as you can see, the build wall action and the quarry action, and I will be using the build wall action this time. And as a bonus, I'm also receiving one white window, because I've taken this hex from this space and I will put it just here. Now, whenever you are taking any of those three actions, uh, whether it's the upgrade action with the gold icon, the gray action with the wall or the red action with the building, you are taking one of these hexes from the display. Now, 
these hexes without the S symbol, so not the special ones, are available to you always. When you want to have this special hex available, the action that you take needs to be connected to the S bonus on the wheel. So uh, I will show it to you later how it works exactly, but right now, because I don't have this special action here, I've had the window bonus, I am only available, uh, I'm only able to take those three walls here, not the special wall piece over here. And what I will do is I will take this wall piece, which as you can see has a few symbols here. It will cost me two rocks to build, it will provide me one egg, and it will provide me one movement on the university board. And this is what I'm going to do. So first, I need to pay two rocks in, in order to be able to build this wall, and then I can place it anywhere around my player board here on the outside. And I'll place it here just for the sake of it. You will be able to build a ring around this hexagonal board of yours, but you won't be able to expand into the second ring, so you're only building like one layer here. So I've placed it, I paid for it, I take one egg as a resource for this action, and I have one movement on the university, so here. And now, about those movements on the universities, if you are moving using this blue symbol from the wall, or if you are moving on the cathedral using the red symbol from the buildings, from the red buildings, you are always moving uh, horizontally in the direction showed by the hour here. So it will be always left on the university track and right on the cathedral track. Whenever you want to, during your turn, you want to move up one row, you need to pay two white windows for it. And also, if you are crossing into a new section, from the first to the second, or from the second to the third, there is an additional cost that you need to pay here, uh, like one gold and one stone, or one gold and two stones. And there are sometimes effects on this track, which will uh, be automatically granted to you, like for example, free victory points, or a free movement upwards, but you still need to pay the cost of crossing the boundary, but you don't need to pay the two windows uh, cost to move uh, vertically, or for example, four victory points, five victory points, etc, etc. So for now, I've moved laterally or horizontally once, thanks to that, and now my turn is over, I can fill in the gap with a new bridge tile, and I place this back here to the last available space, and since the arrow on the action wheel was pointing to this area with the arrow, I spin now the wheel twice, not once. And now it's the other player's turn, and the um, solo player will just remove this tile and put it at the end, spin the wheel once, and again we're back to my turn. So now we've covered three actions basically, because you know already what's happening with the quarry and gold mine actions in general, you know also how to build a wall, so let's make another example and let's try to upgrade something. Okay, so with the upgrades I'll again take this action, because this has the, as you can see, the quarry action on the top and the upgrade action on the bottom, and I'll be using the upgrade action again, and I've this time, and I've also taken it from this action space which has two rocks printed on the wheel, which gives me two rock resources instantly if I want to. And now I will be using the upgrade action. So since I took this hex not from an area with this special symbol, but again from a different one, only those three are available to me. And each of these hexes upgrades a different action. This one upgrades the build a wall action, this one upgrades the upgrade action, and this one upgrades the quarry action when I'm mining for gold or building new gold mines, and they give different effects. Now I think I will take this one, and you take upgrades for free, they don't cost anything. I will take this one and I will upgrade my gold mining action, so you always have to place those upgrades on the actions that they fit to, you wouldn't be able to have like two gold mining actions for example, and I will also fill the gap with a new tile. And now what happens with these tiles is that the first thing is that you have this 
uh, hat here printed on the bottom of the tile, which means that once you upgrade this um, ability with this hex, you gain one university level on this right-hand vertical track, and this is also marked with this hat over here. The second thing is that from now on, every single time you perform any of those gold-related actions, you will be collecting one victory point as a bonus. And the third one is that you get those two symbols and the edges of this hex, so they will appear at those two sides of this player board. So right now, if I am building a wall, for example, here, and I would connect this symbol with another symbol on the edge of a hex, it doesn't have to be the same one, I would collect the window and I would collect the other symbol that is represented. And when it comes to this red corner, if I add another hex tile which has a red corner, I would collect one bonus token, and if then again I would add another of those um, red corners, so I would lock this wheel, I would close the wheel, kind of, I would make a red circle of it, I would collect two additional ones, two additional red uh, tokens, and you will see what we use those bonus tokens for when we are scoring the game at the end. Okay, so I've taken my upgrade, I've filled in the new one, I've positioned it as I wish, I've increased my university level, now I can put this action back into the action wheel and spin again. And then the other player, the solo player in my case, will take the first tile and will put it here and spin the wheel, and so we go. So this was the upgrade action. So right now I could be tempted to do the quarry action to, in order to get this additional free window, for example, uh, to connect those two areas, uh, to, sorry, to get this uh, additional um, victory point. But I think that the best course of action for me will be to build one more wall. And I will take this right now, as you can see from this area, and this triggers this special ability or one victory point. So I have right now access to the gray wall building here and I can build it, but if I don't build it, I can always get one victory point. So this is an either or situation, but I will definitely take this and I will access the special building and take a look here. This special building costs me two stones. It has an edge connected with a window and it gives me two victory points and one window as well. So this is a great building and I will gladly pay two stone for this and I will place it here. So not only did this building give me one, two victory points and one white window, but it also gives me two windows for connecting those two symbols here. So I'm taking two additional windows right now and I have to refill the missing space with another special building from the 1S gray column. And this is it. I can place this back here and spin the wheel again. But now, before I end my turn, I have to remember that at the end of the turn you can only have two windows of any color in your supply. So I would need to spend these two windows automatically in order not to lose them. And this is what I will do right now. I will spend two windows in order to move up one level at the university, which will move me into this free victory point field. And I will get one, two, three victory points basically for free right now. And remember, if I would be crossing this edge here, I would have to pay an additional cost. But right now I'm still on level one, so this additional cost doesn't uh, concern me. Okay, and now the solo player moves one tile and spins the wheel again. And here we are. I think that it would be a good idea to grab me this tile, take one window, and use the gold quarry action. I'm using this gold action, so I'm getting one victory point because of my upgrades, and now I will collect one gold, and I will move this square on the gold track by one in order to build another gold mine. So later I will be farming more gold if I need to. And this is the end of my action right now. And I've got three windows. I would 
like to not lose them pointlessly, so I will spend two of them in order to move one level on the track of the cathedral. And it's no matter that I'm here, but I'm moving one up as well, which will later be pretty beneficial. I hope so at least. So I've put the tile back, I'm spinning the wheel, and we're getting close to the end of the first round. And now the solo player moves this space and the wheel, as you can see, does something like this. Once this arrow covers this space with the square, this square symbol, this wooden block should fall into a slot below the wheel and make it unable to be moved again. This means that we advance the turn marker one space to the left towards this hourglass and once this marker moves onto the hourglass this symbolizes the end of the game. And now after this happens when I spin the wheel I have to take this marker out and then spin the wheel normally and this kind of triggers the new round which uh, makes it easy to follow how many movements we've got until the end. Now connected with this tracker there is one thing that is happening as well. If it's a four-player game, once the tracker moves from this area to this area, so passing this gray symbol with four players, all of these tiles are removed from the board and they are swapped with the level two tiles which I for now have put on the side. For a three-player game, which starts from here, this is the symbol that borders this change, and for a two-player game, this is the area with this yellow line that will tell us when to change uh, the hexes with number ones for hexes with number two, but this will happen once this arrow crosses this yellow line uh, on the action wheel. So for now we are staying with level one hexes still. And it's my turn again. So right now I've got three gold, I've got two stone, and I would definitely like to build one building uh, onto the market. So I will take this hex, which allows me to choose the special building if I want to, or take one victory point. But I will definitely take the red building action, which allows me to grab this special building. And now with buildings, which, as you can see, will cost me three gold, so I will lose all my gold to build this right now, I will drain to zero, I will receive four victory points here, and I will be able to move once horizontally on the cathedral, which will give me two victory points in a moment, and I will also be able to put my marker onto this building. And what does that mean? I will show you in just a moment. Let's place this building somewhere onto the play area. I have all those areas available here. Here the areas cost money but give victory points if I place a building here and I don't have enough money. I'm just broke down to zero. But I will place this building over here and I will place my marker here. So let's now tally it up. I got four victory points, one, two, three, four from this building, and I have one lateral movement here which gives me two victory points, one, two. And now, why is this square important? If all the hexes around a single market will become occupied by buildings, then we look at which players have their markers next to those uh, markets, this means that they're interested, they have interest in those market, markets. And the player who has the most interest, so the most markers in his color, gets both of these bonuses, so three victory points, five victory points, and a gold window from this market. The second player gets only the bottom reward. If there is a draw with players having equal amount of markers uh, next to a single market when it's completely built up, the player who spent the most resources, so the largest sum of rocks and gold together, is the winner in this draw. If there is still a draw, both drawing players will receive both rewards. And after that, these markers are removed and returned back to the players. At the end of the game, these markers will be important as well, but we'll get to that. Now, sometimes 
there are buildings which do not have a place to put a marker and they have this crown icon here on the top with a question mark. What that means is that you are not allowed to place your marker, so you don't have interest in the specific market you build this building next to, but you will receive victory points equal to the number of buildings that which are already built around this market, including the newly placed one, immediately. So if somebody placed this building right now, they wouldn't be able to place a marker here to compete with me, but they would be able to get one, two, three victory points automatically for placing this building there. But that's not the case. I'm done with this action. Let's refill the, refill the space with another special building and I'm done. So I'm placing this back and I have to lift the square to spin the wheel again. And then the uh, neutral player or the uh, automatic player removes one token, spins the wheel, and here I am back again. So now, by now, you are familiar with the basis for almost all of the actions, so you know how to build a building and what happens in the market once you build a building, you know what happens when you build a wall, generally, you know what happens when we upgrade buildings, you know how to mine for gold and for rocks, and right now let's take the bridge action as I call it, but let's take a look at the bonuses that it can give me. I can take the bridge action from one of those two tiles. One gives me one rock and the other one gives me an option to trade one coin for an egg. I don't have any coins, so I will take this token and I will be completing the bridge action and I will also receive one stone. So there you go, one stone and the bridge action is going to be filled by me. And now I take my pawn and I move it to the first space in my collar down the road. There are one, two, three, four spaces and the fifth movement will take you on the bridge and after you step on the bridge that's where your movement ends and you won't be able to travel down the road anymore so those bridge actions will be irrelevant to you. But for now I'm here on the first space and these are the two actions available for me. So the first action is paying an egg to either build one quarry or one gold mine and also receive two rocks or two gold. So right now I will spend one egg in order to build one gold mine. There you go. So as you can see right now my marker is on the six number. I'll zoom it in for a moment. So as you can see because this is a very tiny marking. So I have moved from five to six. And this means that I've also triggered this effect. Apart from uncovering another victory point here, I've also triggered this effect, which means that I can fill in this square next to the gold track with one of those production bonuses from the river. And I can choose any single one. And I will choose this one, which gives me a victory point and a stone. So every single time I am digging for gold in my mines, I will right now get one, two, three victory points and also one stone as a combination. So I've built one quarry right now from this action for which I paid an egg and I will also collect two gold from the second action. And now as you follow along the road, those actions are different. You can spend an egg to receive one gold window or one technology advancement you can uh, later spend also at the same level, spend one coin to get four victory points. Later you spend one egg to get two white windows or build one quarry and one gold mine. And then you can get three victory points per each first level technology upgrade you have. And then when you travel here finally, you pay one egg to take three of these tiles and choose one of them from the top. And these can give you varying bonuses. As you can see, one lateral movement in the cathedral, one window and two victory points, three uh, advancements on the university track on your player board, or one lateral movement on the university board, one window, two victory points, and there are others. And what you do with those is that you put one of them onto any of those spaces on the bridge, also collecting the symbols that you cover up 
with those and the two others return back to the bottom of the stack. Once you reach the level 5, so you make another movement from here, you take the three gold tiles, which can give you effects for scoring at the end of the game. Like, for example, you can score three victory points per each upgrade you have. You can score two victory points for any row you've managed to uh, reach with your marker on the cathedral and the university, or you can get three victory points automatically and then one victory point per your university level or knowledge level on your player board. And you also have to choose one of these tiles, uh, place it on any available spaces on the bridge, collect what's underneath, and then you would place your marker on this tile because it's only available to you at the end of the game. And so you build up the bridge. So this is how it happens. Okay, so for now I've only moved down here on the road. I return the tile and I spin the wheel again. The other player right now would collect this, place it here, and remember that if the arrow is on this area you spin the wheel twice and it's back to me. So now let's collect some gold. I will take this hex, I will collect one white window, as you can see here on this bonus, and I will be not building a new mine, but I'll be collecting gold from my existing mines, just to show you another effect of the game. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five mines uncovered, which gives me five gold. I also get one, two, three victory points, because I've got three crown symbols here and one stone. So I will collect my one stone first from this, I will get my one, two, three victory points, and now let's talk about what's happening here. I had two gold, I get five additional ones, which gets me to seven, but as you can see, I cannot cross this marker when spinning the wheel right now. This means that I have to remove it to get to seven, uncovering this bonus that's underneath and I can put the marker away. And this bonus gives me one up on the technology track, covering this Roman numeral one, which will give me an upgrade later on. And the same happens if you have at least six stones, you will be able to push out this marker here, uncovering another technology upgrade, and once any of the two resources reaches a nine, which is the maximum amount of resource you can have, you'll be able to uncover this, token which will give you one gold window. But for now I've just uncovered this and this meant that I was able to reach the first of the four upgrade spaces on the technology track. So here I can take the three top tokens from the first level of technologies and I will choose one which will be my action. And those tokens are described in the rulebook in detail, so you'll be able to find explanations for all of them, but I will show you examples. This one means that whenever, as a result of the bonus action of the wheel, you collect a victory point, you collect an additional one. This one means the same, but it's referring to gold. So each time you, you take gold from the bonus action on the action wheel, you would collect one more gold and one more victory point. And this one mean, means, sorry, that whenever you build a new mine, gold mine, you get two victory points. Now I have pretty, a pretty hefty number of gold mines, so I won't be doing this, but I will take this action which allows me to collect an additional gold and victory point every time I collect gold from these spaces. This should be pretty useful. And the two remaining ones go to the bottom of the stack, and this is my gold action finished. I put it back, I spin the wheel, now the solo player puts this at the end, spins the wheel, and here we are reaching the gold line on the wheel, which means that we have to right now clean up the first level tiles from these three colors, along with the special tiles as well, and we distribute new tiles from the level 2 category. And these go as usual. So one special one in each of the first areas and three normal ones into the other slots. And these are a bit more powerful, not necessarily more expensive. 
All right. And we're done. So this is the upgrade. And remember, it happens for a four-player game when you cross this line here, for a three-player game when you cross this line here, and for a two-player game when the uh, turn marker is here and this gold line is crossed on the action wheel. All right. So let's take like a few more turns until the wheel closes again and we will stop there and I will tell you about the options of scoring this game, not to make this video any longer than necessary. So very quickly, what else can I do right now? I've just received this bonus, this passive bonus for collecting gold, so it would be stupid not to use it right now. So I will take this tile, I'm receiving one gold from the bonus action of the wheel, so I'm on eight right now, and Whenever I collect this gold from a bonus action, I receive one additional gold and one victory point, which is great, because I've got one victory point, and this is my ninth gold, unlocking this gold window right now. And I will be able to show you one more cool thing in a moment, but first, let's build another red building. Now, let's take a look at the interesting available options. I've got only these three available, because there is no special action here from which I've taken it and I will definitely want to build this. Now, this building will cost me, as you can see, three gold and one stone. It will give me one white window, and it will also give me one lateral movement in the cathedral, and will be uh, allowing me to get some interest in a specific market. All right, so let's pay one, two, three gold. Let's pay one stone for this and let's diversify in the markets right now and i would like to place this building here i will pay one additional gold for placing this building in this hex this will give me three victory points which is really cool one two three and i also place one of my markers here i get one white window and i also get one lateral movement with the red icon on this track and this allows me automatically to move up without spending windows because I've landed on this upwards arrow but I have to still pay the cost of transferring between levels which is one gold and one stone and I will gladly do it. Right, so this was this was an incredibly beneficial action for me but now I am in an even more beneficial position because I have a lot of windows and what you remember I could do is I could take those two white windows and pay for upgrading one more level on any of those tracks in a vertical fashion or as you can see here on those symbols in the middle of your board of your hex board here you can pay one gold and white window or two gold windows to take an additional turn without taking a new hex from here but using any of these actions from your area so you won't be collecting any bonuses from the wheel but you can collect bonuses for doing for example any upgraded actions or something like that so for now i will definitely pay one gold and one white window to uh, do an additional action and i can return this and spin the wheel already because the next player could be thinking right now what to do and refill this and now I've got one more action to choose from and what could I do with this now I've got two stone which would allow me to build something but is there something cool to build with stones right now I've got I would only have this building available to build because this additional action doesn't have any special symbol on it so uh, you never can activate those special buildings or uh, build those special tiles with with this additional action so i will again take a building so i will take a red action i will pay four gold so i will lose all my gold and i will pay one stone for this building as well and i will place it here Next to this market, I will place one marker on it. It grants me four victory points, one, two, three, four, and another lateral movement on the cathedral, which gives me two victory points, as you can see. Okay, cool. So let's refill this space and continue on. Automatic player will waste one action and spin the wheel. We're getting closer to the finish line, and now... Okay, I know what to do. I will first pay those two windows to make an 
upward movement here, which will move my move me onto this right arrow space, which will automatically move me here on this track on the cathedral. This is great. And now I will take this hex. It allows me to exchange one stone for one egg. And I've got one stone left. I will take this egg and I will make the bridge action, which will move me here to the second field. And what I can do with this is that I can pay this one egg to either get a gold window or one knowledge. And I will take the one knowledge, which will allow me to take the second upgrade level. So three tiles, choose one, the other two go to the bottom of the stack. I would be also able to pay one gold for four victory points, but I don't want to do that. So what I will do is that I will take this action, which tells me that whenever I get a single blue bonus token, I also get one victory point and one stone. This is a very good action, it might be very useful. And then the uh, I place the uh, action token back, I spin the wheel, and then the first player does, the second player does the same, and we're close to the end of the game. So one last additional thing that I will be able to do before I tell you about the scoring here is that I will collect some gold. So I will take this, this will give me one white window, I will collect one, two, three, four, five gold, one stone, and one, two, three victory points. And I will put this back, and this makes the square fall in again, so the square is moved here. So now, for the game to end, we would make one more circle, and then when this square falls into the hole again, the game would end and we go to the scoring round. Okay, so there are a few things that I haven't mentioned yet uh, before the scoring because, well, I haven't done them in this game. So let me tell you about them right now very quickly. If any of those rows, uh, any of those columns is filled up to the top, any movement further up with any of your markers will grant you two victory points, that's a basic given, and that's it. If any of those squares marking the, your mines will reach the last area, you can't build any more mines, but once reaching this field, you are able to take any of these uh, seals from the board and placing one marker on them. Now, this one grants you four victory points flat out, this one six. These three you have to pay for them with windows in order to be able to occupy them, but they allow you to, at the end of the game, trade rocks for two victory points, each gold for two victory points, or a pair of rock and gold for three victory points, and each of those seals can be occupied by only one player. So if you, for example, would take this, nobody else would be able to. And now the last hypothetical is how to collect these tokens because I haven't done that in this game. So let me show you just how you could do that. Now, for example, if I built, I have, don't have any buildings with those symbols right now, so I will have to search for one. For example, if you had a building with this blue corner here, you would be able to, once building it, you'd be able to place it so that it matches another blue corner already on the board or on any existing building. And for this matching semicircle, you would get one of those bonus tokens in the blue color. And if you built, for example, another building or somebody did that filled this wheel completely, then they would get two bonus tokens for their effort. The same is with the red bonus tokens, but the red ones are being placed here. So, for example, if I built this fragment of a wall with the red section here and I placed it here, it would give me one red token because I've got this half circle finished. And if I later upgraded, for example, an ability and completed this wheel, I would get another two. And this is how you can collect those tokens, right? So. After one more round, we would have scoring, and now let's talk about this. Now, what do you score at the end of the game? So first, your position on this track is your basic victory points, right? Secondly, you look at the market, and whenever we have a market stall space, 
which hasn't been finished, so not all of the hexes have been developed around the market space, and there are player squares next to them, so you were placing squares, uh, hexes with uh, spaces for squares next to those, you get the bottom result. So, for example, me, with those three squares present still here, I would get four victory points from here, five victory points from here, and two victory points from here because my squares are not uh, taken off the board. They would be taken off if I completely, during the game, completely finished building up this market, and I would score both of those, as you remember, and then those squares would be taken off the board. But for now, at the end of the game, I would score 5, 4, and 2. So the next thing that's being scored is the level of your technology and your knowledge from university and how this is scored is that the level of your on your knowledge track has those numbers here one two three four five six seven eight and it's multiplied by the amount of victory points on your university track here so if for example those two fields were covered here is a five here and two victory points here i would score five times two ten victory points but since for example my university tech, university level is here where there are no victory points i would score none so the maximum you can score basically is three times eight that's 24 so that's a maximum that you could score from here next you score the cathedral and the university and now for the horizontal row you are on in the cathedral university you score according to this diagram here so this row will give you four victory points if you are in this row you will get eight here you will get 13 and here you will get 22. same goes for here if you are here on the cathedral you score four points eight here 13 here 13 here as well but you are available to choose one of those scoring tiles from this pile and add it to your collection and score using this as well and after this you look at the vertical row in which you are and this is the multiplication bonus for those bonus tokens so if i had let's say one red and one blue bonus token in my collection at the end of the game at this point the blue one would be worth one victory point because I'm here on the vertical line and the red one would be worth four victory points because I'm here on the vertical line. You've got this grid shown here. So these would give me five victory points. Next, you count the number of the walls, wall fragments, you built around your city. If you have at least three wall fragments, you score four victory points. If you have at least four fragments, you would score 10 victory points. And if you have at least six fragments of walls around your city, you score 18 victory points. And this is the end of the scale. So six and above gives you 18 victory points. And that's it. Now, the next thing is that you score every gold and uh, every gold tile and every seal that's available to you. So gold tiles with your marker which are on the bridge, gold tiles which you took from here into your collection, and the seals with your tokens on them. And the last thing is that points will be given to you for any eggs that are left over in your supply. One egg will give you one victory point, two eggs will give you three victory points, four, three eggs will give you, sorry, six victory points, and if you have four or more eggs left over at the end of the game, you will grant the, the, they will grant you 10 victory points. You total all of this up and you add the result to the track and that's where you know if you've won the game or not. The rulebook mentions that if you're playing solo, 140 is a good result to have at the end of the game. If you have crossed 140 at the end of the game, you may feel satisfied. Okay, so hopefully this clarifies how to play Praga Caput Regni for you guys, both solo and multiplayer games, because the rules don't change here too much. I hope you are enjoying this game. It's a great Euro-style game from one of my favorite authors, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you understand all of the rules that govern this pretty complex, at first at least, board game. My name is Lone Vic. If you like this video, click the subscribe button, click a like, shout out in the comments, and click the notification bell to be notified about new videos with how to plays and reviews of board games. And for now, this is all. This was Praga Caput Regni. My name is Lone Vic. See you soon. Bye bye.